Senior Director of Display Systems Research at Meta's Reality Labs, Dr. Doug Lamon, recently shared an updated VR headset concept that his team are able to actually build right now. And that headset can pass the visual Turing test, which I'll get to later on in the video. I'll let Doug share the journey of his team's creation himself. Enjoy. Probably the thing professionally I'm most proud of is this wall that my brilliant researchers made. And it's just dozens of different threads. Can they come together at all? And so, a couple years ago, I was like, you know, I need to answer that question to myself. Like, are these things mutually incompatible? In which case we haven't really made real progress or are they leading to something? And, you know, to skip ahead, this thing I, I did tease, which we call Mirror Lake, it's a concept, but it does have a parts list. Like it's a real thing that we could build with significant time uh, spent to, to make it. Here's what that thing is. Step one is always the lens. And so we learned with Holocake, so far, I haven't seen a device that thin that can reach one arc minute resolution and weighs almost nothing. So it just has a bare panel, laser backlight, and then it goes through our holographic lens. And that gives you the thinnest optical stack that can reach retinal resolution. So there you have that. So then the next step is how do you get accommodation, which you saw whiz by there. Uh, and so the way to get that is this electronic varifocal module I mentioned. So we stack up those PVPs, the switchable half waves, and in a few millimeters, we can tack that thing on the front, and now you can have arbitrarily high numbers of planes of focus, 32, 64 planes of focus, and perceptually we've shown that that can be very compelling. So now you've solved at least three to four diopters of varifocal in a compact form factor. Your next challenge, prescription. This thing is so thin and light, you don't want to wear glasses under it, and you don't even want to clip prescription lenses onto it. What I think is you already have a hologram, put that prescription into the hologram. So this would be obviously a manufacturing challenge, but by baking the prescription correction, you can have sphere, astigmatism, cylinder, all corrected for the individual. And in my opinion, these are personal devices anyways. I don't share my cell phone with anyone. Why do I share my glasses in the future? And so that gives us prescription without any holography, without any magic tricks, just a boring old hologram doing our prescription. So that's the viewing optic. So in like a centimeter scale with a fraction of the weight we currently have in pancakes, you could have prescription, accommodation, high resolution, high color gamut. There's the display system. So where do you go from there? Well, the next step is you need an uh, eye tracking system. And so I also showed that earlier. We found that the same HOE that can do the viewing eyepiece in a thin system, that can do the prescription correction in a thin system, you can also bake an HOE to give you multi-view eye tracking. So just two cameras, one on each side looking back in the infrared band, can get multiple views of the eye and give very accurate tracking to drive a, a varifocal system and to make a very high quality distortion-free display. So again, Almost no weight added other than two cameras to track the eyes, which is less than state-of-the-art commercial systems. Then we have to give you back the great pass-through. And so using the neural pass-through algorithms with off-board compute, like Lay was showing, a couple cameras on the front can reproject. Don't use that light-filled thing I talked about. Just use some cameras and some good algorithms is I think the way to go. And then finally, the real missing piece is if I'm gonna wear this for hours a day around my coworkers, with my family at the kitchen table in the morning, you have to be able to see my face. You have to feel comfortable in the environment. And so you need the reverse pass-through display. And so far, the only way we've seen to do it in the industry is a light-filled display on the outside. And so, yeah, I challenged Nathan Matsuda and some brilliant mechanical engineers on my team, electrical engineers, to actually go and develop a parts list. So there is a parts list for this thing, like real switchable half waves, real display panels we can buy, real micro lenses that can be diamond turned. This thing's a real concept. It's not just like, wouldn't it be great one day if we could do this? And so this is what we think you could get. You know, it's not, if you look from the side, it's not completely thin, but it's open. So you can see Nathan's face if you're sitting next to him at your desk. His face is comfortable. We designed a facial interface that doesn't, that has, contact not everywhere in your face so air can flow freely it's less confining it's designed for productivity and then that's an actual simulation in blender of tracing the rays including their aberrations through the micro lens including the pixel structure this is what we think you could do 
with the reverse pass-through system? So that's my answer is the stuff does all come together. It wasn't some giant master plan that happened to, that that was all tailored to come together. I'm not that good. But uh, I guess when you have a bunch of brilliant scientists and you turn them loose, they're like me. They're not looking for solutions in 40 years. They're following the gradient of all these subfields. And all those gradients went through holographic optics. And that allowed us to build something that's cohesive. If you want to see more prototypes that Meta has been working on to pass the visual Turing test, check out this video below. And if you enjoyed this video, hey, hit that like button or eh, maybe even that subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next quickie.